summer of 95, and Lance Mountain had been flowing me boards from the firm. And it was like the summer when everybody used to tour. So back then, you know, all these teams came through. There was like Creature Team first, and then, you know, Foundation Toy Machine, Real Girl. And I got every one of them. I skated after their demo, you know, and everybody gave me a board and was like, give us a call. <laughs> I rode for Lance hooked me up and then uh, Mickey hooked me up with real boards and I didn't want to like double dip you know so I asked Lance and because Mickey said he was going to hook me up you know bigger than Lance could you know and I called Lance and he was like I think you should do that you know I was like I want to come to California and do all this and it didn't seem to be like happening I was on like a flow program you know and so then me and uh, Muska hit it off you know we're smoking pot and drinking 40s and stuff like that, you know? And then at the AM contest in 96, Donnie was like, you should call Chad and get on Toy Machine. Paul Zitzer was like, oh my God, you should definitely ride for Toy Machine. Cause it was like the Muska and it's like gonna be hot right before Welcome to Hell, you know? So I called and then the pro contest was like two months later and Jamie came to the pro contest and then came to Fort Myers with me for a week and we filmed my video part and then that was it. Well, probably like two weeks, three weeks, yeah. I didn't have a filmer or nothing, you know, so he came to Fort Myers for a week and we filmed everything that I had there. We went to Miami and filmed stuff. That was 2001, and I really like Toy Machine. Still to this day, I feel like a connection. I left just because the team had changed, just didn't feel the same. Everybody on the team was my, you know, greatest friends. I get teary-eyed talking about them. You can't see because I have shades on. <laughs> then I was living in LA and I was hanging out with Andrew and Eric and when they had Baker already and then they were going to start Bootleg as a sister company. So everybody that was hanging out that wasn't on Baker was going to ride for bootleg and so they proposed that to me and it sounded like a plan you know that was fun for a couple months a lot of awkward moments i've been in the van and the girls come in you know and and then uh weirdness happening and that was kind of awkward <laughs> Well, they don't like necessarily hit on me, but they uh, proclaim their love for me. And <laughs> I think about this a lot, it's kind of funny. Remember when uh, Big Brother was making those prank calls to people and like publishing them? These people called me one time and they're like, hey, this is whatever. We're going to start a company called Von Zipper and we wanted you to do it. I was like, Von Zipper? I was like, nice try. And I hung up because <laughs> I thought it was the Big Brother people because <laughs> the name was so goofy. I rode for Roxy for a year, though, and that was super tight. So if the Roxy people are watching this, sponsor me again. Bootleg went under, and then I tried to get on different companies, you know what I mean? I was talking to uh, Mark Gonzalez about Crooked, and talked to Julian about Antihero. Timo would always call me in the middle of the night. He's like, you know, there's just no girls on Antihero. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. And like a year and a half had gone by. I remember Jamie just called me out of the blue one day, and I was actually in Florida. And he's like, what are you doing? And I was walking into the skate shop and I was going to get a Guy Mariano board. He's like, what, do you want some boards? And I was like, no, nah, it's cool. I think I just want to ride this one. Two weeks later, he called me and he's just like, well, I thought about it. And if you're just going to skate anyways, I'm just going to put you on zero. And I was like, OK, fine. <laughs> I think he asked me, but he basically told me. And I was like, hmm, should I? And then I was like, yeah, of course I should. <laughs> I like partied for so long. I seriously drank since I was 10 years old. I bought a bag of weed when I was nine. It seems like that's all I did, you know, and I couldn't connect with people or I just felt miserable. Or... It was like I, I didn't want to drink and party, but I couldn't not drink and party. So luckily, you know, a day came where I was like able to not drink or smoke pot or take drugs or anything. And it was pretty much the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I didn't feel like I was really living before, even though I like lived a million, you know, like stories and all this lucky stuff, you know, I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't appreciate anything.